noi oggi ci illudiamo di avere capito tutto però con l'ipotesi del supermondo se non ci mette il supermondo voi potete fare una domanda alla quale io dico eh, ma questo non lo so ecco cosa vuol dire abbiamo capito tutto se fosse vero che i modelli meteo climatologici hanno capito tutto dovrebbero spiegare come mai c'è il Sahara e non lo sa spiegare nessuno come quell'immensa distesa di vento è diventata al deserto e tante altre cose che purtroppo non ho tempo e faccio io una domanda se posso dire sì, come no interpretando eh, credo anche la, il desiderio di molti ma allora questi che si dicono che si danno la certezza che le emissioni di CO2 sì, eh, no, eh, condizionano il clima del nostro pianeta perché ci raccontano queste cose? cioè sulla base di quali eh, nozioni di natura scientifica? abbiamo incominciato questi segnali nel 1980 però perché hanno funzionato questi segnali? perché i consiglieri scientifici delle superpotenze di Reagan, Gorbachev e Denzi Hawking erano fisici e tra fisici di un certo, di un certo livello ci si conosce tutti e si fa in modo tale che magari racconti se la cosa non funziona ora lì c'era poco da fare quando io ho parlato con il presidente Pertini un capo di stato che fa quando gli dicono che bisogna spingere il bottone che può fare? spingere il bottone spingere il bottone vuol dire ci hanno attaccato e se e non è vero il bottone fa partire si spara tutto subito ecco il pericolo che affiggeva il mondo noi abbiamo regalato al mondo 50 anni di pace grazie al fatto che la scienza aveva in mano le chiavi di quella logica perché non si risolve più nulla perché la componente dell'altro lato non ha nessuna quantità di roba di natura scientifica quindi non c'è modo di intervenire bisogna studiare tanto tanto e, e fare i controlli l'idea di fidarsi poco è un'idea molto giusta non bisogna fidarsi mai di niente bisogna cercare di non fidarsi e bisogna cercare di farsi dei controlli rifarsi i calcoli e vedere la coerenza delle cose che sentiamo. Purtroppo succede spesso che anche delle persone che hanno delle carte universitarie addirittura di cupola ne sono tante. E in particolare quando parliamo del clima, tutte le storie che raccontano sul riscaldamento globale causato dall'azione degli uomini sono profondamente sbagliate, non ci hanno capito niente. E perciò è molto difficile quando vediamo degli scienziati professionisti che discutono fra loro e hanno pareri radicalmente diversi sapere chi c'ha ragione e per riuscire a capirlo bisogna diventare delle vecchie volpi e lavorare parecchio. And the global warming alarm is dressed up as science, but it's not science. It's propaganda. There's no direct evidence which links 20th century global warming to uh, anthropogenic greenhouse gases. We're just being told lies. That's what it comes down to. You can't say that CO2 will drive climate. It certainly never did in the past. If the CO2 increases in the atmosphere as a greenhouse gas, then the temperature will go up. But the ice core record shows exactly the opposite. So the fundamental assumption the most fundamental assumption of the whole theory of, of climate change due to humans is, is shown to be wrong. The whole thing stinks. No longer just a theory about climate. It is the defining moral and political cause of our age. When people say we don't believe in global warming, I say, no, I believe in global warming. I don't believe that, that human CO2 is causing that warming. A few years ago, if you would ask me, I would tell you it's CO2. Why? Because just like everyone else in the public, I uh, listened to what the uh, media had to say. Each day, the news reports grow more fantastically apocalyptic. Politicians no longer dare to express any doubt about climate change. There is such intolerance of any dissenting voice are some of the worst climate criminals on the planet this is the most politically incorrect thing possible is to doubt this climate change orthodoxy this is the story of how a theory about climate turned into a political ideology See, I don't even like to call it the environmental movement anymore because really it is a political activist movement and they have become hugely influential at a global level
Global warming has gone beyond politics. It is a new kind of morality. Scientists need there to be a problem in order to get funding. We have a vested interest in creating panic because then money will flow to climate science. There's one thing you shouldn't say, and that is this might not be a problem. That's history when we had three times as much CO2 as we have today, or periods when we had ten times as much CO2 as we have today. And if CO2 has a large effect on climate, then you should see it in the temperature reconstruction. Geological time frame, we would never suspect CO2 as a major climate driver. None of the major climate changes in the last thousand years can be explained by CO2. Fact of the matter is that tens of thousands of jobs depend upon global warming right now. It's a big business. It's become a great industry in itself. And if the whole global warming farrago collapsed, there'd be an awful lot of people out of jobs and looking for work. I've often heard it said that there is a consensus of thousands of scientists on the global warming issue and that humans are causing a catastrophic change to the climate system. Well, I am one scientist and there are many that simply think that is not true. Man-made global warming is no ordinary scientific theory. This morning, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change made up of... It is presented in the media as having the stamp of authority of an impressive international organization. From the IPCC, the... Inter the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC. The IPCC, like any UN body, is political. The final conclusion are politically driven. This claim that the IPCC is the world's top 1,500 or 2,500 uh, scientists, you look at the bibliographies of the people and it's simply not true. There are quite a number of non-scientists. And to build the number up to 2,500, they have to start taking reviewers and government people and so on, anyone who ever came close to them. And none of them are asked to agree. Many of them disagree. Those people who are specialists but don't agree with the polemic and resign, and there have been a number that I know of, uh, they are simply put on the author list and become part of this 2,500 of the world's top scientists. People have decided you have to convince other people that since no scientist disagrees, you shouldn't disagree either. Uh, but that, whenever you hear that in science, that's pure propaganda. This is a story of censorship and intimidation. I have seen and heard their spitting fury at anybody who might disagree with them, which is not the scientific way. Are the old illustrations and prints and pictures of old Father Thames? Because during the hardest and toughest winters of that little ice age, the Thames would freeze over. And there were wonderful ice fairs held on the Thames, skating and people actually selling things on the ice. If we look back further in time, before the Little Ice Age, we find a balmy golden era when temperatures were higher than they are today, a time known to climatologists as the medieval warm period. Apocalyptic outcomes. In fact, wherever you describe this warm period, it appears to be associated with riches. We're having a heat wave. In Europe, this was the great age of the cathedral builders, a time when, according to Chaucer, vineyards flourished even in the north of England. All over the city of London, there are little memories of the vineyards that grew in the medieval warm period. So this was a wonderfully rich time. And this little church, in a sense, symbolized it because it comes from a period of great wealth. Going back in time further still, before the medieval warm period, we find more warm spells, including a very prolonged period during the Bronze Age, known to geologists as the Holocene Maximum, when temperatures were significantly higher than they are now for more than three millennia. If we go back 8,000 years in the Holocene period, our current interglacial, it was much warmer than it, was, than it is today. It uh, gives you a handle on the fact that what you're seeing is warming that probably is not due to greenhouse gases. That is, the observations do not show an increase with altitude. In fact, most observations show a slight decrease in the rate of warming with altitude. So in a sense, you can say that the hypothesis 
of man-made global warming is falsified by the evidence. Humans produce a um, small fraction in the single digits percentage-wise of the CO2 that is produced in the atmosphere. Volcanoes produce more CO2 each year than all the factories and cars and planes and other sources of man-made carbon dioxide put together. More still comes from animals and bacteria, which produce about 150 gigatons of CO2 each year, compared to a mere six and a half gigatons from humans. An even larger source of CO2 is dying vegetation, from falling leaves, for example, in the autumn. But the biggest source of CO2 by far is the oceans. Common belief that carbon dioxide is driving climate change is at odds with much of the available scientific data. Data from weather balloons and satellites, 